Hello, all rovers, and there's no time for an intro. We're doing an Echoes tier list. Now, this game has not been out for very long. I have not been playing it for very long, but I've done lots of Echoes farming. I've, I've somehow only missed two. What did I miss? Oh, no, yeah, that checks out, actually. That, that checks out. So we're going to be going through each of these Echoes. We're going to start with the cost ones then go to the cost threes, then go to the cost fours. We're not going to be discussing a whole lot of combinations. We'll talk about that in a future video. But for now, we're mostly going to be judging based off of their ability. Um, But outside of that, we'll also brief... We'll, we'll, we'll mention the Sonata effect like sets if it's relevant. Um, Or perhaps it won't be relevant at all, but we shall see. So... Um, disclaimer, this is opinion, an opinion of somebody who has not been playing this game for very long at that. So, you know, if it enrages you, I apologize, hashed out in the comments, go nuts, hate views, still cash. So, uh, yeah, we're going to start with the Whiff Summon a Whiff that deals arrow damage and produces a low pressure zone. We're going to give that ability a C. I think, if I'm not mistaken, low pressure zones are like... They are like, I mean, a little bit of area of effect control, but it's like if you're using, if you're using an arrow character, why would you use the whiff waff? That I don't know why you would do that. Okay, snip snap. Summon a snip snap that throws fireballs dealing fusion damage. You're gonna give you a C. I mean, it's damage, and it's technically a summonable. Eh, maybe I don't know. It since it's a summonable, it is technically usable. It's just there's other fusion damage summonables that you'd rather use if you're trying to use like a uh, like an encore or something where you want her on field as much as possible. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at C just because there are better options. Summon a zigzag that deals spectro damage and creates a stagnation zone. I have no idea what a stagnation zone is. I I don't actually. Um, C, C. I, I don't know, but you know he's not gonna have a whole lot of damage here. Tic Tac, not the Breath Mint. Summon a Tic Tac that deals havoc damage. It, you know the drill here. See, it's serviceable, but there's so many better options. Summon a Gull Puff to blow bubbles and deal glacial damage. Gl 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 glacial, glacio damage. Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, uh, I mean, see, the, the thing with these cost ones is that they're all just so basic, and there's others that do the job better, honestly. I mean, they are summonable, so they're usable, but meh. Summon a Chirp Puff to do the powerful Blast of Wind. Deals arrow damage and knocks enemies back. That's kind of neat, actually, if you're getting a little bit overwhelmed. Again, you really would never use this guy in any practical sense, but we'll give him a higher C. We'll give him a higher C next to the Whiff Waff there, because, I mean, you know, having knockbacks okay. Transform into an Excarat. To quickly advance, become immune to damage. So you just become a rat. You, you literally just become a rat and get to scoot. And not even scoot, you get to scurry. That's an automatic D for me, dog. That's, that's, yeah, that's just not gonna do anything. That, well, what's the point? Transform into a baby Verdeblaze Saurian. Rest in place to restore HP. Why? Why? Why would you use your transformability to heal D you get D summon a saber board to charge and deal physical damage okay so here is where this thing's gonna get ranked into D whereas everybody else that's been like a summon to do damage I ranked in C here's the thing with the boar the boar does physical damage bro thinks he's supposed to be long on a eula but, um, no, you're in the wrong game, bud. Those boars, we don't get those echoes. You in, you in Wuthering Waves, there is no physical damage. You get designated to D. The Fusion Dreadmane. Now, this guy is actually kind of okay. Mostly because he has two really good Sonata effects. Oops, he's, um, he's got the Fusion one, and he's got the, um... The, uh, the healing bonus one, both of which are actually pretty popular. So I'm going to be kind to you, and I'm actually going to give you a B. Because, like I said, you, what you've got is pretty dang good, and he's only got the two, so it's a 50-50 chance of getting one or the other. 
That's not too bad. And being a summonable, not bad. Diamond Claw. Transform into a Crystal Scorpion to enter a defense state. Counterattack to deal physical damage. Why? Why would you want to counterattack? That's what parrying is for. You end up in D next to the boar. Cruise Wing. Summon a Cruise Wing to heal friendly units. D. If you want to heal people that badly, just use a healer character. A bug is not going to get the job done for you. It will never get the job done. Hort Tortoise. Or Hortus. 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 Okay, now he does get style points. Especially this white shiny version. He does get style points. I'll give him that one. But he is still just a healer and a slow healer at that. I mean, it literally just says slowly restore HP. We're going to put him as a high D just to be respectful to the turtle. But, um, no, yeah, that's 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 all he's going to be cooking with. Who's camp? The monkey. This is kind of another situation as the fusion dreadmane where, I mean, he's nothing special, but at least his Sonata effect makes him pretty convenient to farm. Um, attack is not the most common one, but I think there is a place for it. And then arrow is very good. So we'll, we'll give him a B. He's I. Now, it is unfortunate. He's not a summon. He's a transform. So he's going to be, like, low B. He's not going to be a very high B. But for the sake of what he does, we'll we'll give that one to him. Glacio Prism. Summon a Glacio Prism that deals Glacio damage with crystal shards. I don't care for the spiky ball. It's, it's just a spiky ball. It's... It just got crystallized. So, no, you, you go to C. Uh, I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put you under the Whitweth. Fusion Prism, same thing, different Sonata effects. Fusion damage, C, right next to your icy brethren. Havoc Prism, same thing, Havoc damage, C. You go to C. I'm trying to find them on my list. There we go. You go into C. Spectro Prism, Spectro damage, same thing, C. Young Rose Room. This is a butt ugly looking looking mob here. This is just ugly. You, you go to you go to D out of spite just because I don't like you. I mean, to be fair, he is he is like arrow and havoc, so he's technically perfectly farmable. But I just don't like him. I just don't like him one bit. Vanguard June Rock. Physical damage. There's no Eula in this game. D. Get in there. Um, fish and junk rock. Summon for healing. If not in combat, it picks up minerals or plants nearby for you. You know, I kind of respect a cute ability, you know? I, I kind of do respect a, a gatherer ability. I, I, I give him I give him a turbo low C, but I won't insult him with D, you know? I kind of respect that he'll go around and grab stuff for you. You know, it's, it's, it's a cute little thing. Electro Predator. Now, this one is actually pretty good. Mostly because he's the only one you can really use on Kalkaro if you're not using one of the cost four overlords. Um, because it allows him to just summon this thing without having to transform into it. It allows him to keep up his own damage. And it's got two of the best Sonata effects in the game because it relates to the two best characters in the game. Kalkaro, well, three. Yinlin and Ek uh, Encore. So, that does admittedly give it a noteworthy boost. We're going to make it that our very first and probably one of our only cost one A units. Glacio Predator. I would say the same thing about him if we had any units he could be properly used with when in the Glacio element. So to be nice, I'll give him a B. I'll give him a high B for the uh, in, in respect to the potential that he has. It's it's I. Where is... I'm looking at my tier list here. Where is he? There he is. We'll give you a B out of respect. Just to be kind to you. But don't push your luck. Arrow Predator. This guy's kind of... I don't know. He's okay. Because the first guy was... The, the first limited was GN. Um, so if you wanted to just keep him on field, you could use Arrow Predator as your summon. And again... One of the best care or two, two of the best characters in the game, being Yulin and Kalkaro, are Electro, so this guy is extremely convenient to farm. The only thing is, he, he kind of does get demoted because he's he's only arrow damage, but 
Eh, we'll, we'll give him an A. We'll give him an A just to be nice. Fusion Warrior. Transform into Fusion Warrior to block enemy attacks, deal fusion damage, and reduces Echo's CD when the block is successful. Blech. I'm gonna give you a C. Only because... Only because you do have Arrow and uh, Fusion and Electro, so you do have some great Sonata effects, but your ability is trash, so you get a C. Havoc Warrior. Transform into Havoc Warrior and continuously deal Havoc damage. So, I mean, you're gonna farm this guy if you're using any kind of Havoc characters. The problem is you'll never actually use his Havoc skill because there's just better. There's just dramatically better. So we'll give you a high B. Out of out of respect for the fact that you're gonna farm this guy for Havoc Rover, it's just not practical to actually use his Echo skill. The Traffic Light. This is a funny little guy and also a terrifying little guy. I, you know, Traffic Light with arms and legs is horrible but also hilarious at the same time. Summon a traffic light illuminator to immobilize the enemies. I would imagine this probably doesn't work on bosses and there's really no point in finding out because it is pretty pointless and gimmicky, yeah, but it's a cute little gimmick, I guess. So we'll give you a C just out of, we won't quite throw you into the D territory, but you're on thin ice, bud. You're just on thin ice. Next, all of our Cost threes. The elite class echoes. No, 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 no. Cost three. I said cost three. Cost three. There we go. Okay. Cyan feathered heron. Transform into the heron to charge at enemies dealing arrow damage and interrupt enemy special skill. Now that is interesting. The wording there of interrupt enemy special skill. I don't actually know what that means, if I'm being totally honest. Um, but it is a transform, which does make it a little bit of a negative versus, um, like your typical just summonables. Still, though, we'll give him an A. Um, eh, it's, it's A too generous. It's A too generous. Maybe high B. Yeah, high B. I mean, he doesn't have, he has arrow and he has, a. Uh, Spectro, which is I. We'll give you a high B. This one we're gonna give. Oh, it's a counterattack, though. We don't like counterattacks. It's a kind of another one where you're definitely gonna farm him because he's fusion and electro chances. But you're not gonna use him practically, so we'll give him a high. We'll give him a higher B. You'll farm him, but you probably won't use his actual ability. This guy is actually pretty freaking good. Summon a Verdant Blaze Saurian to continuously spit fire, dealing fusion damage. This is what you would use on, like, Encore if you don't actually want to use the Echo skill for the Inferno Rider. And pretty much for most uh, fusion characters. This guy's actually pretty awesome. For that, we're actually going to give him our very first S tier. I also like the Big Lizard. I think he's a really cool design. I, I like the Big Lizard. It's a little unfortunate that he has the energy recharge because of just how bad it is, but we're not going to worry about that. Next, we have the Spearback. I like the bear, but he's got physical damage. Physical damage, as we've established, is useless. Yours, I mean, your, your skill gets a D. Cost three and D, you hate to see it. Havoc Dreadmane. This is another one that you're definitely going to farm as a part of building your your Havoc Rover, most likely. Um, but it is a transform, and again, there's so many other better Havoc transforms. So for that, we're gonna give you an A. You're still pretty good. You're still pretty good. We'll give you a lower A, but we'll still give you an A. The Who Chief. I mean, it's kind of the same problem with the Havoc Dreadmane, where there's just better transforms. Um, so the problem is that Arrow is not quite as prevalent, so we're going to put you in B. Put you in high B. The car thing. Now, this kind of is like the, the stoplight for me, where it's like, oh, what a unique idea. But it's also kind of, this one leans a little more into terrifying territory. Um, transform into carapace to, pre to perform spinning attacks, dealing arrow damage. I just don't like him. I'm going to put him in a low B. I, I don't like the car. I, I, I don't... 
I don't like the car. I do not. Big Roche Room. I mean, it fires a laser, and it is a summon as opposed to an actual transform. It's butt ugly, but you know what? It's effective, and I've used that effectiveness as a judgment prior, so we're going to actually put you as an A. Especially since, you know, Havoc Rover exists. Now then, we have Stonewall Bracer here. Transform into Stonewall Bracer and charge forward. Successful hits grant a follow-up strike and a shield. Gimmicky at best. C. Now it is, he's like one of the first ones you ever become in the game, and let me tell you, that is, an, that is an experience to turn into this huge thing. So for that reason, I do not put you in D, but we are going to put you into C. Tambourinist. Summon a Tambourinist to let friendly units inflict additional havoc damage. This is a weird dude. This is a really weird dude, because he thinks he's a support. Bro thinks he's a support. Now, that means a few things. It means that he doesn't do any damage, but like, okay, friendly units hit with Melodies of Annihilation deal an extra Havoc damage of 14.40% with their attacks. Up to 10 times. That's a pretty tiny buff, actually. I take it back. I was going to give you some credit for being a support that you could use even if you weren't necessarily using him properly, but I don't know. That's kind of small, actually. That's kind of... That's a little sad, actually. I, I gotta... I think I gotta put you in C for that. 14.4% is kind of small. Especially if you're taking up that ever-valuable space. We, we'll, we'll put you... We'll put you there. But you're meh. Transform into Flautist to deal electro damage and recover... Concerto Energy. Eh. I think he's a little better. We'll put him low B. Well, I don't know. He's a transform, though. Eh. Nah, we'll, we'll stick with B. We'll stick with my initial gut reaction and go for B. Eh, we'll go, we'll go there. Next to the fusion dreadman there. Chasm Guardian. Transform into Chasm Guardian to perform a powerful strike that deals havoc damage. Lose some HP on hit, and then recover HP over time. Kind of a cool ability, actually. I, I do dig it. But his Sonata effects do not lend himself to being usable. Not that they're bad, per se, but okay. Let's, let's talk about this. You've got the healing bonus Sonata effect. Which does not... Which I mean, if you're running... If you're running a healer, you're not using Chasm Guardian. You're using the turtle we're going to talk about later. The Bell Turtle. And then with the attack one here, I mean, I mean, of course he's a great cost three, but the havoc damage one is just so much. The havoc damage Sonata effect is so much better and has so many better units, especially once you start getting to overlords, where it's like, why would you even bother? So for that reason, I mean, like I said, I think you're neat, but that's about it. So I'm gonna go low B eh, over the Tambourinus. Yeah, we'll go with that. Rocksteady. Uh, Counterattacks. Blah. Blah. You get a D. You don't like counterattacks, and your Sonata effects make you make it kind of pointless. And the Auto Puppet, the robot icy thing. Transform into Auto Puppet Scout to glacio damage to nearby enemies and generate ice walls. I feel like ice walls kind of get in the way is the thing. Like, why would you want an ice wall? Just let the enemies get to you. C. C. We're going to go with C. Next, we have the cost fours. Now, cost fours are going to be the ones that, for the most part, they're the ones you're going to be actually using as your main echo skill because they are just so dang good. And we'll talk about why. First of all, Thelion Burringle. Big Monkey. Transform into Big Monkey to continuously attack enemies, dealing arrow damage. Increase current character's arrow damage and heavy attack damage. Now, there is the teeny tiny caveat here where with this guy, you do actually have to transform. And sometimes that could be a bit of a hit to your DPS. However, unlike some prior options, especially just these overlords in general, 
they just do so much dang damage that it's okay. And then the arrow damage, and in this case, heavy attack damage on top of that is a, is a hefty buff. So with that said, we're going to put him in S because he is pretty much, he, he's the pinnacle arrow support. That's just it. Next we have Impermanence Heron, Freaky Bird Boy. Transform into Impermanence Heron to deal Havoc damage. Long press to spit flames and continuously deal Havoc damage. So it's kind of like you just fly and uh, shoot flames. Once the attacks hit any enemy, restore the current character's resonance energy. Increase next character's damage dealt. Here's the thing with this bird. It has the, what I think is, I mean, maybe this is subjective, but it's got the worst Sonata effect on it. It is locked into the energy recharge Sonata effect. Even worse, it does Havoc damage, and again, there is just so many better Havoc options. I mean, at the very least, you get you got the skin from the first event if you, if you got there, but even the skin is kind of okay. In fact, I kind of think the original looks better with the purple. And then... It, I mean, I just can't get past the energy recharge. It gets a B. It gets a B. We'll, we'll give it even a low B, honestly. Uh, mid B. Let's see. We'll, we'll put you there. Put you right there. I, I feel sad to put an Overlord in B, but there are just so many better options. Now then, Morning Aches. Yeah, I get Morning Aches too, bud. Um, transform into Morning Aches, continuously attack enemies, dealing Spectro damage. Increase current character Spectro damage and Resonance Liberation damage. Here's the thing with this very freaky looking bird thing. It's great that it works on spectral characters like this. It is a definitive spectral overlord. But why? Why? There's no good spectral characters that can really use it aside from maybe spectral rover, assuming you don't immediately go to Havoc rover, as you probably should. And eh, I mean, what are you going to do? Put this on freaking arena? No. No, you're not, because you're using the bell turtle. So, you get an A, mostly due to circumstance, if I'm being honest. Mostly due to the fact you just don't have any better options. We're going to put you... Yeah, we'll put you there. You, you go A, mostly due to circumstance. Crownless. Transform into Crownless and relentlessly assault enemies, dealing Havoc damage. Increase current character's Havoc damage and Resonance skill damage. Now, if you're using a Havoc character... You're using either Havoc Rover, or I think there's one that's like scales on defense or something like that. You're using either Crownless or you're using the other one that we're going to talk about a little later. This guy is freaking good. He is the second best Havoc Echo Skill abil ability, basically. And that's really saying something because he is pretty good, but the first best is just that good. But regardless, we will put Crownless in S tier. We, we'll give him a crown, so he will no longer be crownless. He'll just be crowned, I guess. Mech Abomination. Here's the thing with Mech Abomination. I like Mech Abomination. I think Mech Abomination is cool. I think that he gets more crap than he deserves because his ability is admittedly a little quirky. Basically, what he does is instead of turning into Mech Abomination, you don't you don't even summon him really. You just basically make a big AOE of electro damage, and then piles of scrap fall from the sky and deal electro damage, and they explode, dealing electro damage. He is more effective in groups. He is admittedly kind of useless against bosses because if you're only fighting one boss, then only one scrap is going to come down, and that's assuming the boss even stands still long enough for the scrap to hit him. Or the mech waste, excuse me. But if you're fighting a group of enemies, then you're kind of cooking. And then he increases the current character's attack, which, I mean, it's a simple effect, but sometimes simple is the most effective solution. And I actually use this guy in my Calcaro to great effect. Definitely by choice and definitely not because I could not for the life of me get an Electro Sonata effect for Calcaro. Definitely not. It definitely was not forced. Definitely because I wanted to. But but in all seriousness, if I'm looking at this objectively, it's a quirky ability. But it, it works well enough. And it's not a summon, which means you're not interrupting your own on-field time. 
So for that reason, I'm gonna give him an A. We'll give him a high A because I do like Mech Abomination. I think he's a little, I think he's underrated. That's just me. Thundering Mephis. Transform into Thundering Mephis to deal electro damage. Increase the current character's electro damage and resonance liberation damage. This dude's just a definitive electro overlord, period. I mean, it's not even close. Bonus points for the fact that you can animation cancel him if you need to, plus increasing character's electro damage and resonance liberation damage. It's a dream come true for Yen Lin. So, I mean, that's an easy S. Easy S. It's, it's not even a question there. Inferno Rider. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and say this guy should be an S. And I will put him in S. But that doesn't mean I like him. So here's the thing with Inferno Rider. That makes me a little salty. His animations, while they hit like a truck, are so dang slow that he, it's not, half the time he misses. Half the time, if you don't just animation cancel him, he, he misses. The, the, the last ability where he like puts his scythe on the, or his glaive or whatever it is, his lance on the shoulder and summons a meteor to hit the enemy. It's so dang slow that half the time it misses. But, it increases character's fusion damage and basic attack damage. It's just begging to be an encore. We're not talking about the long press echo skill. I don't like it. It's like, okay, you get to be on the bike for two freaking seconds. Who cares? So he is S, but I'm going to put him under the sorry and out of freaking spite because I can. So, yeah, I mean, he's S. He's the definitive. He's the definitive fusion overlord. But that doesn't mean I have to be happy about it. All right, the... Oh, here we go. Lampilumon... Lamp... Lampilumon... Myriad. What even is this thing? Is this some kind of a bug? I think it's some kind of a bug. I'm pretty sure it's a bug. Transform into that bug. To continuously attack enemies dealing glacio damage, increase current character's glacio damage, and resonance skill damage. It's kind of... It's kind of in the same boat as the Morning Aches. Where, I mean, yeah, it's the definitive Glacio care Overlord. But why? But there's no good Glacio characters. I mean, there's Lion Boy, whose name I totally forget, but but why, though? Why, why would you use him? If you got him, it means you got Pity Broken. So, we'll put him here in a... I mean, like I said, he's the definitive Glacio character, but he's kind of held back by the times. It's just the reality of it. Now, this guy, you might look at this guy and say, hey, didn't we talk about him already? No, that was Thundering Mephis. This is Tempest Mephis. He's an interesting one because he's the only overlord, not counting um, Crownless and the one we're going to talk about in a bit. He's the only overlord that double dips on a Sonata effect. I mean, I'm sure that won't be forever, but it, it this is like the only Overlord that properly gives access to like the conversation of going four four one one one. I won't I won't delve into that right now. But I suppose the question is well, which one you like more? Thundering Memphis increases electro damage and resonance liberation, whereas this guy is electro damage and heavy attack damage. If you're using Yin Lin, you should probably be using Thundering Mephis because her resonance damage hits like a truck. You could also use this guy on Yin Lin because her heavy attack damage hits like a truck. But if you're using Kalkaro, you're probably going to be using Tempest Mephis, unless you're like me and using Mech Abomination, in which case I respect you. Um, but I personally, I mean, I mean, there's barely a difference for being honest, but I do think um, Thundering Mephis is a little bit easier. I'm going to rank Tempest Mephist just under Thundering, mostly because I just hate his hologram challenge so dang much that I feel the need to spite him. So, he's still S. I'm going to put him under Crownless. Uh, I just, uh, like I said, I just feel the need to spite him, but we're still going to put him in S because he is the definitive, like, Electro along with Thundering, and is the only one that can enable a 5 set while using double um, Overlords. Which hey, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into the conversation of whether or not that's a good thing, but I'll just say that's possible. Now, we have two more. 
two more are only calamity four cost characters and they're both going to be s tier but we'll talk about why first of all dreamless transform into dreamless to continuously attack enemies and deal havoc damage this echo skill deals more damage i think it's like 50 percent or something after rover havoc casts their resonance liberation so this one is a fascinating case where it is specifically linked to Havoc Rover. Once Havoc Rover uses his liberation, this thing hits harder and this thing already hits like a truck, okay? So you might look at that and say, oh, well, it doesn't have any Havoc boots. And while that is technically true, this thing hits so blank and hard that it really doesn't need it. So we're gonna put it, of course, in S just over Crownless. The only reason that Crownless could outrank this thing is the fact that Dreamless is very specifically Havoc Rover. You're not gonna use this thing over Crownless for any other Havoc character in the game, which probably means that Crownless should rank higher than Dreamless, if I'm being totally honest, if we're being real with ourselves here. But, I mean, also this thing has got drip for days. I mean, holy crap, it's freaking demon of the damned over here. So yeah, it, we're S tier for sure. And finally, Bell Turtle. I love Bell Turtle. Bell Turtle is an awesome design. The Bellborn Geo Geo Kellion. Geo Kellon. Geo Geo Kellon. Geo Old Spice. Um, I like Bell Turtle. And what Bell Turtle does here activates the protection Bellborn. What's it call it? Dealing geo damage to nearby enemies based on current character's defense. Don't worry about that. Reduces incoming damage and increases damage dealt. That is what makes this thing definitively the best support in the game, period. His effect makes you makes it so you can really take a punch. And and I mean again, it's a damage buff too, especially if you make this a main echo skill of Marina, compared with all of her other buffs she can provide, plus the healing bonus effect here, you can do a lot. You can really crank up some damage using this turtle. I am going to put him in the number one slot of S tier, not only because he is so good, but because I offer this placement as a peace offering, because it is so freaking hard to get this turtle to drop with healing bonus. I've gotten crit damage and crit rate on this turtle so freaking much, and I just need freaking healing bonus. I mean, attack works on Verena because she scales on attack, which is all fine and dandy, but healing bonus is the best one, and it just refuses to drop. So I put you in S tier. Please accept this peace offering, and please don't make me spend another week of 15 guaranteed Calamity Echoes and just get flat defense again, or crit rates. Please, please don't, I beg of you. So yeah, that is all we have for today. That is all of the current echoes in the game ranked. Did you like the list? Do you hate the list? Are you indifferent? Are you even still watching at this point? That's what I would like to know. If you are still watching at this point, I appreciate that, I really do. Because holy crap, this video took a little more work but that is okay because it was fun. I will say, at some final notes, the fact that you can have these at all, even the trashy ones, it's just cool, man. It's just a cool feature of the game. I love being able to farm echoes. It's tedious as all get out, but being able to use their abilities and such is just so dang cool. It, it makes them actually interactive as opposed to like Genshin and Honkai where it's just like, stats and stuff it actually makes these guys interactive and i love the heck out of it i mean you can be a puffy looking fish or summon a puffy looking fish you know what why not you, you want to be a rat you be a rat go for it so yeah on that note that is all we have for today let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this particular tier list and we shall see you next time have a good one